तस् वैशापरा देवी स्वरूप मर्शनोत्सुक पूर्णत्व सर्वभावेशु यम न चादिक तस् वैशापरा देवी दिस दिस कलेक्टिव स्टेट ऑफ यूनिवर्स विच इज विच विच इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द मिरर ऑफ गॉड कॉन्शियसनेस दिस होल यूनिवर्स विच इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द मिरर ऑफ गॉड कॉन्शियसनेस इज हिज सुप्रीम एनर्जी एंड वाई ही हैज क्रिएटेड दिस सुप्रीम एनर्जी इन हिज ओन नेचर जस्ट रिकॉग्नाइज हिज ओन नेचर this whole universe is just means to recognize lord shiva you you can recognize lord shiva through universe you cannot recognize lord shiva by abandoning universe so you have to observe and experience god consciousness with the very activity of the world if you we remain cut off from the universe and try to realize god consciousness it will it will take centuries if you remain in universal activity and be attentive to realize god consciousness it will be very easy for you to understand so this this outside universe is created just for the sake of realizing his own nature that is it is called that is why it is called shakti this whole universal state is called shakti it is this is the means to realize one's own nature why should he want to recognize huh? why should he want to it is swatantra it, it because if he does not recognize it what is the fun uh, of universe universe is created just to recognize him. just for fun really. just a fun yes it is swatantra this is why in shaivism this is swatantravada everywhere if he was if he were only shiva hmm? he was there he was he was in his full splendor of god consciousness there is no lack there no in that, in that, it is full it is always full. full then fullness is overflowed you know what happens afterwards he wants to re- remain incomplete he wants to appear as incomplete just to achieve completion so this is the swatantra this swatantra has created this whole universe so in universe there is ignorance and for ignorance you want to uh, you, you want to get rid of that ignorance and there is way there is way that uh, in the activity of world you will meditate and bus uh, reach in the state of god consciousness so this is the fun of swatantra you leave it you you leave it when it is overjoyed niji shakti vaibhav barat and chatur when it is overflow when it overflows then you want to disconnect it so that's his position that is the his position disconnect it because of too much too much of it you want to get disconnected from that state and then connect yourself it gives pleasure that is swatantra this is why this whole universe is created otherwise there was no reason to create this universe when god was there already in his own uh, knowledge completely he has come in universe to enjoy his own fullness of god consciousness fullness of god consciousness he has enjoyed already he was enjoying already it was too much so he he wanted to disconnect it for the time being and realize it again so it is unmesha and nimesha unmesha is mm, flourishing of that uh, god consciousness nimesha is uh, winding that god consciousness extract and um, contract expansion and unmesha and nimesha this is swadantra so this is the way how this universe is created otherwise there was no room for this universe to be created what for so in, you got consciousness was already full but it was overflowing overflowing flowing, flowing. and then he wanted to do something else yes. well when when it was <laughs> when it was overflowing was shakti was still shakti was in his, in his own nature at that time and 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 at that time 
then it overflowed too much, then he had to separate Shakti from his nature. And then in Shakti also, Shiva is existing. On that Shiva was ignorant. And he wanted to have the, this the fullness of his knowledge, as before. So, so he contains the, both this of those. Is the way. He contains both of those in himself the same, at the same moment, though. There's not a point where he's... he's no, at, at, the at, the, at, the moment, at the moment he realizes his nature, mm. from ignorance to knowledge. Mm. He experiences at that very moment that it was already there. But that's when the point... This is the, this is the proof. This is the proof of his being already filled with knowledge. Mm. In ignorance also. In ignorance also, when this ignorance vanishes from that individual, he experiences and this memory comes in his, in his mind that it was already there. It was already there at the time of knowledge, at the time of um, existence of God consciousness. So there was never really any separation? No, there was, the separation seems to be yes, yes. by Swatantra. Eshi Devo Naya Devya Nityam Krida Rasotsuka Vichitran Sreshi Samharan Vidatte Yugapat Vibhu Eshi Deva, this, this Supreme Lord Shiva, who is all pervading Vibhu, Anaya Devya, along with this uh, energy of his own nature, which is his energy, the universal existence. The universal, the cycle of universe is his energy. With the cycle of universe, universe, this Lord Shiva, Nityam Krida Rasotsuka, he is fond of playing and playing and playing and falling. He has crushed his own nature because of too much of ecstasy. He wants to disconnect that ecstasy. But that ecstasy in, in its real way cannot be disconnected at all. He knows that. Mm -hmm. But still, for, the, for fun, he disconnects this for the time being. And Vichitran Sreshi Samharan Vidate Yugupath Vibhu, he, uh, he creates, he um, creates Vichitran Sreshi Samharan, he creates varieties, varieties of creation and varieties of destruction. He creates birds, he creates bugs, he creates all nonsense in this world. Whatever is possible, whatever is not possible, he creates them. The purpose to see, the to purpose to see that God consciousness is also there. So there we have, uh, that's verse 5 and verse 6. And you can see the progression of these verses uh, since the beginning. The beginning uh, was the postulation that there's only one being, and then that being is... So there's his own Shakti, and that Shakti is this universe, and so now the question comes, how did this universe come to be? Why is it, and why is it here, and how did it come to be? Because here we are, we're sitting in it, and we're reading this. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting in it, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know, he wants to know, how did, this, how did this get here? I mean, what is the reason for this universe? Is there some reason? And did, was this created for some purpose? And so forth. And we, and we've seen earlier that, you know, that because... Of God's absolute freedom, his patantria, uh, he he can be said to need anything. He has no no needs in terms of uh, so he couldn't have created for some purpose. So then, what is the reason why this is created? And so in our Shaivism, we understand that this word is really just like just in the, the overflowing of God's God's nature into the world. He uh, we say that he was so filled with ecstasy. In fact, there was too much ecstasy. I mean, you know, the nature of his being is filled with ecstasy, and it was too much ecstasy, and so he he wanted to get to get get rid of that, so he just threw it out into the, and, and, and and created the world. That, and that uh, you know, we have, people have experienced that they where they have too much joy, it's just they just can't stand it. I know, uh, and sexual experience uh, in, in other moments of their life where they just it's too much too much joy. I thought tickling might be in that in that way of understanding this, but. My wife and he says, no, tickling doesn't work. I don't like tickling. So. <laughs> I was tickled too much when I was younger. So we couldn't use the tickling analogy. But, but it is the fact that this, this, the, you know, God had so much joy, he just overflowed, and he overflowed into the world. And, 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 and part of that overflowing into the world, as we just heard, is that uh, he overflows in such a way that he loses himself in the world, 
but the reason, uh, but the fun for God, the, the joy for God, is that He loses Himself so that He can find Himself. Uh, it's uh, because the, the joy of of self-discovery, you know, because as we know, there's only one being, so we're all all that uh, reality right. is our own nature. That's who we are. So, so <laughs> that the joy of our coming to realize our nature that that uh, that's God's joy, and He He loves that realizing, coming to know His own nature, and so this whole world is just an expression just for that. In fact, uh, as we'll see, and we'll be talking about that. And the point is that that this whole world is really only only created for uh, that realization. He loses himself, and uh, and then he and then the fun is that he has to, he has to find himself, and so he gives us tools and so forth to do that. And again, we'll talk about that. But but the main thing here to, to understand is that this this world was created out of uh, just an overflowing of God's joy in the world, and that uh, and he overflows that way in such a way that he disconnects himself. He calls it disconnecting himself. Yes, he disconnects himself. But he, but he doesn't actually, he doesn't really disconnect. Dis, it's a, the paradox of a lot of, a lot of these kinds of ideas is that he disconnects himself, but he doesn't really disconnect himself. He uh, seems to be disconnected. Yeah, because he's just, he just said in that, in that thing that uh, at, the, at the moment of realization, you realize that you always were realized. So there never was a disconnection. The disconnection only seemed to be. Yeah, it seemed to be. Yeah, it seemed to be. Because that's, uh, that's where we say that knowledge is not, ignorance is not something else like uh, another state of being. It's just a lack of knowledge. It's just uh, uh, it's like clean the screen, as it were, almost wipe the, wipe the mirror off. And, and, and all of a sudden you say, oh, I was always there. Yeah. So this, uh, this realization, what do you have there? You have some play, something to play for us. I thought it was really interesting because um, a number of questions that have come in, you know, since we began the webinar, and, and some which came in from the pre-webinar, uh, questionnaire where how, how how do I apply these principles of, of Shaivism in my daily life when uh, you know the world seems to be such a, a struggle we look around us there's, there's suffering and now Swamiji is actually telling us that that this this objective world it's, it's a commentary of God consciousness it's a commentary of God consciousness so you can find it in the world and here in, in the first part of this tape we just heard Swamiji says, so you have to observe and experience God consciousness in the very activity of the world. He says, if you remain cut off from the universe and try to realize God consciousness, it will take you centuries. If you remain in universal activity and are attentive to realize God consciousness, it will be very easy for you to understand. That seems to be... Uh, Difficult to understand, how do we remain in activity and realize God consciousness? But just a little further on, he says there is a way that in the activity of the world, you will meditate and reach the state of God consciousness. And this is a really, really important point in Kashmir Shaivism, this whole concept of, of meditation in action. And it's brought up in the Bhagavad Gita uh, in, in the sense of understanding what is the meaning of, of karma yoga, yoga in action. And uh, we, we wanted to play you this uh, short thing of Swamiji discussing this. This is, this is from, again, from the very early lectures that Swamiji gave to John and Denise back in 1972. There's a section in Secret Supreme, uh, which is a, a synopsis of all those lectures, and there's a section on... Um, uh, difference between Kashmir Shaivism and Vedanta. But there's a small section here on, on, on what's the real meaning of Karma Yoga. From Shaiva point of view, Karma Yoga means yoga in action. Yoga in action is pure yoga and nothing else. What, do you mean, what is meant by pure yoga and nothing else? Yoga means one-pointedness. It is purely one-pointedness. One has to develop this one-pointedness in your being, in the existence of your being. Just to explain it vividly, when, when you are seated in bus or when you are walking on the road, you observe silence. One has to observe silence. This is the way uh, Kashmir Shaivism has explained. Yoga in action. You are walking <laughs> silently. You are seated in bus silently. Be, be seated silently. Don't talk to anybody there. Uh -huh. Go on your pra with your practice without talking to anybody. And in, in this way, this is called yoga in action. 
you have to begin in in this way. So just being silent all, always when you're going and coming. When you are walking, not talking. Yes. Talking is something else. In the beginning, you can't do yoga in action while talking. Hmm. When you are talking to, with anybody, to anybody, you can't do yoga. And boasting to be in yoga in that way is is incorrect. Hmm. You have to start with silence first. You can you can walk. You can ride ri- ride on scooter. Hmm. You can ride on scooter and go on with your practice. And this yoga in action has got tremendous effect. For instance, when you are contemplating in your meditation room, if you come contemplate there for about one year, constantly, spontaneously, and in, if you contemplate while working, only for fifteen minutes, the fruit will be the same. The fruit of will be the same for or or fifteen minutes. For uh, three years, two years, contemplate, contemplating in one in one room. In, in this has got tremendous effect. Why is it there is such a great difference? This action makes it more firm, more valuable, more mm. solid. Mm. The contemplation becomes more solid, more sub, sub, substantial mm. by by action. This is why we have we have put stress in yoga in action, not yoga in active yoga. Mm. On, not only sitting in post posture and practicing yoga silently in one corner. That is not the way. You must act. Act and also have this one point. Of view. Yes. For instance, you are, you are walking for you are walking ten miles, hmm? five miles going and five miles coming. When your con- contemplation is complete, after returning to your home, then you sit. You will enter in for a state of yoga in action, and that will take carry you uh, rapidly to that uh, transcendental being state. But in emphasizing that value of, of meditation and action, the, oh, when I asked Swamiji, I said, "What do you mean by yoga in action?" He said, "You go on with your practice and just doing what you're doing during the day." And he said, "You can't you, in the beginning, like he said, you can't." Be talking to somebody because very difficult to observe the breath while you are, you know, uh, talking to somebody. But when you're doing menial chores, cleaning the house, or cycling, or driving the car, it's uh, it's something. And, and as he says, if this is a this is a real secret of Shaivism, but it strengthens formal practice of meditation. They and, both complement yeah. each other. Yeah. The seated meditation and the meditation in action. Yeah, it's actually one meditation. Yeah, I think the point, one of the points we have, we're, we're going to be coming clearer and clearer is the fact that as this world is really made for practice, in this world he gives us the tools that we need to, you know, to, uh, to practice. And we know that this world is 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 uh, just an expression of God's country, of God's energy, and, and, that, and that energy is in all forms. And so every aspect of this world, and every part of it is energy. And so that means that our senses are energy. I mean, I mean, our, our shaktis, our eyes, our shaktis, our ears, our our, our, our tongue, our everything, all of, all parts of our our, our being and our our shaktis. And so what we have in our shaivism, the greatness of our shaivism, is that we understand that these these all these different shaktis are really given to us are our are our tools uh, for realizing that reality. And so we have to take use of these tools. And uh, and one of the things that Swami had told. Us as many times is that you should just try to be aware, aware, or be in practice as much as you can. You know, you may not, you may go along during the day and you may not forget all about it, and you're not remembering it, and you're doing other things. But as soon as you do remember it, then just do it for a while, and then, then again you'll be forgetting, and you'll be going on and doing some other work and odds and ends and whatever. And then again you'll remember, oh, I should be practicing, or I want to practice, and then so it just comes in your mind, and you, and then you should practice again. So as as much as you can. If that happens for you that you can remember to practice, you know, or that it comes in your mind to practice, you should just practice. You know, yes. that's we can see that's a, a blessing for you that you have that thought that you should that you should practice during the day, outside in the during the day, or inside in your room, you know, uh, in, in meditation room in the evening and morning. So it's just that the day should be filled with practice. In fact, Sanji mm-hmm. says that you in really in the spiritual world actually your your life should be filled with more than fifty percent practice. I think, oh, that's a lot of practice, you know. But that's 
because that's you know that's just the nature of you know the, you should, your world your life should be from our Shaitan point of view your life should be more given to spirituality spirituality than to other aspects of reality. Of course. Any thoughts? Any thoughts there on that, Denise? Well, I was just thinking of um, Vijnana Bhairava with the 112 different ways of meditation, and many of them are in um, activity. And um, that's something to maybe, um, you know, share with others at yeah. some point. But it's true, that's a good point, because what that shows you is that this, 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 all these tools that are given to us, there's different ways, you know, that you can use to, uh, to realize the state of God consciousness. And so there's all different kinds of ways. Through taste, you have that. And through seeing, you have that. And through hearing, you have that. And through all, all the every uh, all, all these different shaktis and different paths. And so in this Vigana Bhairava, you have the uh, Bhairava gives us uh, 112 different ways of, of practicing. Some are more subtle and some are more uh, evident, but they're all very powerful ways of you know, having that reality. Any uh, any thoughts on this story? After Bhairava teaches Bhairavi the 112 ways, she asks him, okay, can we cut to the chase? Can we just, can you just tell me what's the essence of this, you know? And, uh, and, and basically the summary in a nutshell, as Swamiji presents it, is that Bhairava says, yes, well, well you know, breath is, is the really important one. And, and a human being breathes, you know, in and out 21,600 times a day. So if you take away, let's take away sleep. So we sleep 12 hours, so 10,800 opportunities to watch the breath. <laughs> so that's, a, that's quite a big thing. Of course, if someone can do that, I'm sure they're, they're almost enlightened or already enlightened. But the, the point is, um, Swamiji approaches these things in a really interesting way. He said that just watch your breath inserts subjectivity in your objective world. These are all objects around us. This is our objective world that we've already discussed. We've created it. But to be aware of, of your breath alone is, is a, a stabilizing point in that. You're not getting lost in the world. You're inserting a, a degree of your own subjectivity, you know, your own inner nature in the world. So this is, I think this is why this practice in action which he just talked about, is, is considered so powerful in, in Kashmir Shaivism. Try it and you'll see. I remember when it was first introduced to me and, and I started to do this, it was a revelation for me. It was just something, and it did everything that Swamiji said. It strengthens your, your practice when you do go to sit and meditate. Um, it, it, gives, it gives that strengthening, as he said. This is mentioned actually here in this verse 5 about being alert, you know, in, in, in activity. And so um, that's a really powerful word, alert. What do we mean by alert? And, and, and I think it, we could talk a little bit more, a little bit more about this because this is uh, kind of the, uh, the crux of it. In, in that sense, it's the this alertness of the, uh, of the subjective presence. Anyway, that this, that this, you know, think about the world we live in, you know, and how, how, you're, how it is that generally we live our lives, you know, and, and what happens is in, in this world of limitation that we're, they were, they were captured in, we could say, that the, uh, the, the, the subject is lost. And so the, it's just the objective world that we have, or the cognitive world, the world of thinking, or the world of dreaming, I mean, the objects. And so there's no, there's no subject in these, in these experiences. There's only the object. And so uh, I'm, you, you can't see really I'm thinking, you just say thinking. I'm, thinking's going on, or, uh, or seeing is going on, but you, you, there's no I'm, I'm seeing. And so what we want to have is there has to be somebody there, the, uh, the, the, that person, the subject of the just spoke about, the subjective nature of, of a human being, that has to become apparent so that when we're doing activity in the world, then there has to be somebody that's doing that activity. I'm, I'm acting, so I'm watching my breath. So when you're watching your breath, when you're doing the activity in terms of meditation, then what happens to do that begins to wake up the subject because there has to be somebody who's watching their breath, you know, and, and that they, we want to make that that watcher alive and, and more present. And, and, and the more present that that watcher is, the more the more closer to God consciousness he is actually. Any other thoughts on this? I, I just wanted to add a little bit about um, this whole concept of meditation in action. 
Swamiji um, said that uh, his routine, when he first uh, started to serve his master, and his master was living in, in the ashram, he would go to the ashram at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. He'd make his master a cup of tea, and he said his master used to sit from 2 o'clock till 5 o'clock. He would sit in, in samadhi. He would just go straight into samadhi for three hours. And during that time, Swamiji said, there's a hill in, in the middle of Srinagar called Hari Parvat, and uh, Swamiji would walk around that hill. It takes about probably uh, an hour and a half to two hours to walk around the hill and, and then uh, come back to the ashram and, and his master would, be, would come out of samadhi and then he'd make him another cup of tea and then uh, that was his routine. But in emphasizing that value of, of meditation and action, Swamiji said that he had his first really um, serious experience of God consciousness when he was meditating on the bus, he said he was sitting on the back of the bus just just watching his breath, just doing his meditation practice, and, and the whole universe opened up for him, he said, and he just went into this really deep state. And it happened, he said, while he was practicing his, uh, his meditation in action. I think he said he was about, he was a teenager, he was between 16 or 19 years old or something, but... That, that was the first experience, and uh, he, he definitely clarified that that happened while he was practicing in action. Well, I, I think it would be nice, um, we, just to recap, because we're, gonna, we're leaving these verses now, we can get Denise to, uh, to read out the brief meaning of verse 5 and 6. The collective state of the universe is his supreme energy, Shakti which he created in order to recognize his own nature. This Shakti, who is the embodiment of the collective state of the universe, loves possessing the state of God consciousness. She is in the state of ignorance, remaining perfectly complete and full in each and every object. Number six, the Supreme Lord Shiva, who is all pervasive and fond of playing and falling, together with the energy of his own nature, simultaneously brings about the varieties of creation and destruction.